In this video, I thought I'd uh, hook up the Talo modulator that I'd built earlier, link below, to the amplifier that I'd uh, created earlier, also link below, and take a look at the output on the oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer to see what, uh, how the amplifier is, is performing and uh, what sort of non-linearities it is introducing. There are also four uh, independent adjustments uh, that, that we can make to this setup here. Well, at least four in this setup here. And that is, uh, I have a, a, a multi-turn trim pot for, that can adjust the IQ audio balance. Um, I've got the mixer output level, which I can adjust here. I've got the audio input level, which uh, is just off screen here, coming from the uh, signal generator. And then finally, I've got the uh, bias to the, uh, to the gate of the uh, IRF510 that I've got in the amplifier. So what I'll do is I'll just go through and adjust those and see the, see the effect on the output signal, um, demonstrate the, the effect of changing each, and uh, we'll see what we see. So let's start with a uh, simple two-tone test uh, that I've done before with the, uh, uh, with the Talo uh, modulator. And uh, so just to go through the setup here, so I've got the audio signal coming in here, which is the uh, 700 hertz and 1900 hertz tone. And here's the, uh, the Talo modulator here. And the output of this is sent uh, through this cable here through to the amplifier. And then the amplifier is connected to a dummy load, a simple 50 watt uh, uh, fi sorry, 10 watt uh, 50 ohm resistor, and then I'm sampling the output uh, to the oscilloscope. So let's pan up to the oscilloscope and uh, see what that two tone looks like. So I'm just going to turn on the uh, the Talo mixer, and then there you can see the uh, two tone signal um, as it should be, um, with a nice uh, sort of dual sine wave up the top and then down the bottom. Now note, this is different to the uh, the sort of dual sine wave you have on an AM signal in that uh, the sine wave is this structure here, up and down. But you can see there's a nice clear crossing point. There's a, a straight line across here which uh, indicates a good linearity on that uh, two-tone test. Okay, so let's have a look at that same output on the spectrum analyzer. So you can see here, here's the two major peaks here, and let me just go to that. So uh, there's a peak here at uh, offset uh, 700 hertz from the carrier, which is down here, and another peak which is offset 1900 hertz from the carrier, which is here and here. So they're both at minus 21 dBm. Note there's a pile of other peaks, all these other harmonics that are created, uh, through various non-linearities non in the amplifier here. So we've got two other major peaks here. And this one, let's just go over to that. Bear with me, I've just got to uh, get there. So we've got a peak over here at what is effectively plus 500 hertz from the carrier. And then a peak over here, which is at uh, minus 3100 hertz from the carrier. So doing the math to work out how do these harmonics arrive, so it turns out that this one here is 2 times F1, so that's uh, 2 times the frequency of this guy, minus the frequency of this guy. So that's 2 times, seven, uh, two times 700 minus 1900 gives 500. And then similarly on the other side, this is 2 times F2, minus F1. So 2 times 1900 gives 3800, minus 700 gives a 3100 hertz offset. Okay, so let's have a look now uh, the effect of adjusting this uh, IQ balance uh, multi-turn pot here now. Okay, so there's that signal. You can see the highlighted signal there is the uh, suppressed upper sideband uh, signal. So let me just adjust that. And uh, you can see that as I adjust the multi-turn trim pot, that suppressed lower side, upper sideband signal is diminishing. But note that it's not affecting any of the harmonic products at all. So let's have a look now at the effect of uh, adjusting the, the uh, bias to the gate of that uh, RF510. So I've got my... Uh, uh, little uh, adjusting tool uh, in that pot there 
and we'll see the effect first of reducing the gate bias and the effect it has on the two-tone signal. Okay, so let's start with that two-tone signal from before, and I'll slowly reduce the gate bias. And you can see that as I reduce that gate bias, let me just pause it here so I can, uh, I can show you that without keeping the amplifier on. So as you can see here, we no longer have that smooth crossover there, and in fact, it's starting to look more like an AM signal than the two-tone test that, uh, that we need there. So we, instead of this sharp sort of crossover here from here and from here to here and here to here, we've now got the upper looking more like a sine wave and the lower looking more like a sine wave. So let's just go back to the, uh, to the, uh, the previous setting so you can see that for the purposes of comparison. Bear with me here, a lot going on. So there is that uh, signal, I've just got to get the scope looking right, with the, with the gate bias voltage increased. Now of course increasing the gate, bu uh, the gate bias voltage even further gets you into other non-linearities. -lin As you can see here now, let's just pause that so you can see that. Uh, look at the, uh, look at the uh, signal now uh, with an increased gate bias and it's, it's uh, basically going into uh, into a complete distortion at the top of the signal there. So let's see the effect now of uh, decreasing the gate bias on the spectrum analyzer. And so I'm slowly decreasing it now and you can see those two, those two peaks are still there but the peaks on the, uh, on the left and right of that are, are increasing. Um, so in other words that, that harmonic signal is stronger. So there's obviously a sweet spot there of gate bias voltage and you can see there I'm getting closer and now it's starting to so that's about the sweet spot for uh, for gate bias voltage any less and I get that sort of signal and obviously any more and we start to get that runaway behavior in the uh, in the output there so let me just try and get that back oh, it's a little too far there we go there's the sweet spot right there so another point of adjustment that I have here is the uh, the mixer output level, which is just controlled by this resistor divider pot here. So let's adjust that and see the effect on the output signal. Okay, so there's that two-tone signal again. Now reducing the uh, mixer output, as you'd expect, just reduces the amplitude of the two-tone signal. But as I increase, I reach a certain point where there's sort of this runaway, let's just stop that. There's this uh, runaway effect in the, in the amplifier where not only is there a distortion, but uh, the, the actual amplitude was increasing uh, without me doing anything in, in that case. So, uh, so that's the effect of uh, the sort of a sweet spot there of, uh, uh, or rather a maximum drive level beyond that, you start to sort of get this runaway effect in the, uh, in the amplifier. So anyway, I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed this little quick uh, update. Uh, a little a little less uh, organised than usual, I think. I just wanted to uh, sort of get the results of the uh, of the amplifier out there uh, uh, for everyone to see. Now again, this was all at 14 uh, megahertz, so I would like to do this uh, kind of same thing at 7 megahertz and uh, and see if there's any difference there. But uh, anyway, that's all for now.